Bayero is the former I use more than any other to shoot professional portraits and commercial work with my iPhone 16 Pro. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to shoot it, starting from scratch. And don't worry if there's no light bulb moment for you and things don't just click in this video. The comments are open and there will be lots more to come. When you tap the shutter in the camera, your iPhone's doing all kinds of behind the scenes wizardry to give you a polished image. HDR, deep fusion, semantic segmentation, toe mapping, sharpening, noise reduction, the works. Well, Bayerol skips all of that. No HDR, no toe mapping, no noise reduction. You get the raw sensor data. Light hits the image sensor, gets digitized, and then saved to a file. And that can look pretty bad at first. Bayer RAW files are noisy and often look worse than regular iPhone photos straight out of the camera. But that's also the point. You get full control, just like shooting RAW on a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. You decide how to expose, how to color grade, how much sharpening or noise to reduce. And if you get it right, which I'll show you how to do in this video, the results can look way better than anything the iPhone's built-in processing can do. To shoot by Aurora on your iPhone, you need a third-party camera app. The built-in camera only gives you Pro RAW which despite having RAW in its name is still processed. I use Reflex Pro Camera and did you really think I was gonna say I use anything else? I'm going to link to it in the description. With the app open, head into the settings, capture options and set the RAW format to RAW only. Not RAW plus JPEG. If you choose RAW plus JPEG, some editing apps will show you the JPEG instead of the RAW file, which can be confusing when you're new to all of this. Then back in the main viewfinder, tap next to the shutter button until you see RAW. And that's it, there's no more RAW settings. You can't even change the resolution because it's fixed at 12 megapixels. Now, shooting in Bayer RAW is a completely different experience than shooting regular iPhone photos. In other formats like Pro RAW and JPEG, your iPhone takes multiple exposures when you press the shutter. It blends them together and gives you a nicely balanced image with properly exposed highlights, shadows, and everything in between. But with Bayer Raw, you're only getting a single exposure, one frame, no blending, no magic. And the challenge is your environment's exposure range versus the raw file's dynamic range. Here's what that means. The exposure range is how much contrast there is in the scene how bright the highlights are compared to the darkest shadows. The dynamic range is how much of that contrast your camera can capture in one shot without clipping the highlights or the shadows. If your scene, if your environment, the thing that you're photographing has more contrast than your raw file can handle, then you have to make a choice. What do you expose for? The highlights, the shadows, the midtones? It's up to you. If you expose for the shadows, then the highlights might be too bright. And if you expose for the highlights, then the shadows might be too dark. So what do you do? You prioritize and you ask yourself, what do I care about the most? In this scene, the exposure range isn't extreme. I exposed for Katie, who sits comfortably in the midtones, and the raw file has enough dynamic range to hold on to both the highlights in the sky and the shadows under the trees. But in this example, the sun is much harsher. Katie's face is now pushed into the highlights and her hat casts a strong shadow across her forehead. So here, something has to give. And this is where with iPhone RAW, you're not just pointing and shooting. You're taking your time to craft purposeful photos. It is an easy choice here though. Katie's forehead is in shadow because the hat is blocking the light, so it's supposed to be in shadow. So I exposed for her face and let the shadows fall off naturally. But when I say exposed for her face, how do you do that? Well, you use the manual controls, and this is where the challenge, or the fun, depending, begins. Because the image that you see when you're taking a photo, this bit, and all of the exposure guides available, like the histogram, are based on a processed, lower quality version of the image. 
and they don't properly represent your raw result. Take this shot as an example. Here's what I saw on the screen when I was shooting. The image and the histogram indicate all is good, but the raw result and histogram look like this. However, if this does happen to you, and I should say when this happens to you, because it will happen, then all is not lost. Because raw files have so much dynamic range, you can recover these overexposed areas. But more on that in part two, when I show you how to edit your beta raw files. For now though, we wanna get our exposure correct. So the first thing I always do is bring the ISO down to the lowest it will go. This is mainly for image quality reasons. So iPhone RAW files are naturally noisy and keeping your ISO low will keep noise to a minute. So drag the ISO slider all the way to the left and you might see a different ISO value than the one I have here. It depends on which iPhone or camera you're using. Next, choose your shutter speed. And honestly, the best way to do this is to guess and then refine. Here I guessed wrong. I chose a shutter speed that was too slow and Katie was overexposed. So I tried again with a faster shutter speed and got a slightly better result. I increased the shutter speed a little bit more, one more time, and I was happy. Once you have a decent exposure, and by that I mean one that you're happy with, just carry on shooting at those settings. You don't have to touch them until the light changes. Speaking of light, let's look at my favorite situation to shoot RAW in. Dramatic, harsh, high contrast lighting. For me, this is where Bayer RAW really shines because it allows me to create dramatic portraits. This is definitely a more advanced situation, but the process is the same. I set the ISO low, but not as low as it will go by mistake, honestly, but it's okay because 80 is not far off. Then, since I know I want half of her face in shadow and the other half in the light, I exposed for the half of the face in the light, and that required a shutter speed of almost 13,000. My first shot was a touch overexposed at around 8,000, and it wouldn't have been a disaster, but I knew I could do better, so I sped it up, and once I saw in the gallery that it was what I wanted, I could carry on working with Katie, who's a professional model, to get the perfect shot, which ended up being this pose. This is the unedited RAW file, and if most people saw this, they probably wouldn't be very impressed, and they probably would think that the iPhone 16 Pro has a rubbish camera. But the point of RAW is that you are capturing potential, not a finished product meaning there's always going to be more to do. You'll always need to edit the files. And I'll show you how to edit raw files in part two when I take you through my editing process. In the meantime, the comments are open. Please share this video with other iPhone photographers you think would benefit from it. And I will leave links down below to the apps and the lenses I used to capture the examples in this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you